From the year 1899 to 1907, the Champa Tigress alone killed 436 people, around 200 people from Nepal, western part and 235 people from northern India. Many studies argue the actual number must be much higher, many deaths at that time must not have been reported, and that is true as well. So tiger by nature are so elusive and intelligent animal. The cases where the tiger attacks man is so rare but sometimes it does when it feels threatened to itself or to its cubs or when human interrupts its feed. Otherwise, these tigers actually consider humans to be above itself in predatory level. We must have been so fortunate to be in such positions in the perceptions of the world's most fearsome warrior tiger. But why and how did the bath tigers turn into a man eater? We are going to excavate things out right now. So, the story all started from the western part of Nepal, which is still famous for the densest concentrations of the Royal Bengal Tiger. During the year 1980, the Champaat Tigress first incident was reported in the Rupal village in the Nepal. But Rupal village was in Pahad area, a terrain at higher altitude which is not actually suitable habitat for tigers. So, how did the Champaat Tigress ended up there? Why didn't it stay in the Tarai Fort Plains where it could feed thousands of deers, boars, sambas, water buffaloes, and wide varieties of other prey? Why was it even necessary for it to travel into such a terrain where the wild herbivores were so scarce? All to feed human? No, but there was something else. To avoid predators and competitors, the Champoth Tiger was found to have been a victim of a rifle attack when Jim Corbett killed her in May 1907. He figured out that cannon teeth of the Champoth tiger was shot hard by rifle, because of which its both teeth, canine teeth were deeply broken. Upper cannon was just half left and the lower one was broken from its bone. Now, without a canine tooth, a tiger is just a weak thing in the wild. It could have been easily killed by a group of dogs or bears or even the competing tiger which keep on intruding the other's territory. So to avoid all of this, the Champoth tigress had to move to Pahad area where there were no wild dogs, no large number of bears, except for few snow leopards which it could easily overthrow and most important it could feed on big number of slow and coward creatures, human. That time, Tara was scarcely populated by human while the part area in Nepal was heavily populated and that could be a good food for the tigress Champawat. After the Champawat's first attack, it continued hunting humans throughout its whole life. It must have understood how easy kill human were from its first attack. Every week a person was dead in a village. And the amazing part about Champoth was it hunted in a such a way. Even for hunters, it took many years to find its tracks. The tigress would hunt in a chain. It routinely hunted people from different villages. During its three to four years of human killing in Nepal only, the psychological effect it gave to Pahari people was so severe that some seasons people didn't even come out of the house to field to sow grains. They even starved to death but didn't come out of the house. But if they dared to come out, the next moment they would have been a good food for tigress. But the tigress even entered the village and started dragging people out of the house and hunted them. Many villages including Rupal were in a severe mercy of this tiger. Knowing that the Shah King of Nepal that time sent the most fearsome warrior of the world, Gurkhaj, to have it killed, but searching for many months they couldn't find a trace. Gurkhaj are not Gurkhaj when they are competing with a tiger, which have drank the same Himalayan water as theirs, but thankfully one day the Gurkhaj were able to trace it. They chased it with their bravery and flee the tiger from Nepal. The Champaat tigress was seen to escape us south of the Kumau river and travel to the northern India. In the meantime, the problem was gone in Nepal, but it started somewhere else, in Pali village in India. With similar tactic, Champaat hunted different villages of India, and it continued for ma many years there as well, killing more than 235 people. Finally, when the people stopped coming out of the house and the production was low in overall in India, the British ruler then sent the finest man-eater killer of that time, Jim Corbett. When Jim Corbett was called in the royal palace and was said about the problem of the man-eater, 
he immediately agreed to shoot the tiger off, despite he was actually in a journey to save these disappearing tigers. It was his people who were dying of the tigers, so he agreed. Looking at Jim Corbett's life, he started hunting from age 9 and he shot his first tiger in age 12. He was so funny that he would only carry 3 bullets and go for tiger hunting alone in the forest. On that time, when Jim Corbett reached the Pali village to shoot that man eater tiger Champawat, just some days earlier, the Champawat had killed a 16 year old girl from the same village. He didn't waste time and walked on to start tracking its trail to the path where the tiger had dragged the girls deep into the forest. Finally, in a bush, all he could find was some fingers and claws of the girl the tiger had finished eating. The tiger had moved to some other places. He missed. For many months, the finest hunter, Jim Corbett, kept searching, couldn't find, because villagers who knew about the place were too afraid to come out of their house and help him to share details. But one day, the Champath trail was seen in the village, Champath. He got informed from his friend Thalistar. Corbett soon knew the tiger was there. He asked his friend Thalistar to help him in so that he could prevent tiger from escaping this time. He asked if all the villagers could move from one place with noises so that tiger would move opposite to their directions where Corbett would be waiting. The villagers agreed. The villagers next day, with their trumpets and guns, started moving in a circle from one end of the jungle. In the other part of the Corbett and Talisdar were waiting at the deep forest for tiger to run away from villagers, noise in the opposite side. And it happened. Corbett saw a man eating tiger for the first time face to face. The stripes and trails in the thick bush, his friend first fired, but he missed all of his bullets. He fired, then Jim Corbett fired his rifle. Oh god, he missed as well. The tiger could have killed them in a matter of minutes, but the tiger ran away. Opposite to a villager's area, the old villagers hearing the gunshot and who were so convinced with Corbett would never miss a shot were so happy they started firing their unlicensed gun bullets into the air. Because of that noise, the jump of the tiger again moved back to Corbett's directions. Lucky Corbett. This time, he aimed straight to it and shot the fire. The tiger was hit, yet the tiger hadn't seen the Corbett who was hiding in bus. He fired the next bullet, it hit right on his chest. Yet, the tigress wasn't dead. The Corbett had no more bullets now. He ran 100 yards more and took the shotgun from his friend and come back and stand just in front of the tiger, just 20 yards away. Finally, the tiger saw the corvette, the cause of its pain, and got ready to attack. But the, but the corvette finished the game with one big shot on her head. And when he examined the tigress, he knew the cause is why she turned into a man eater. He got a bit sad knowing human were sole responsible for turning tigers into man eater, but he had solved problem of his people. and. That's how a jump out road would forever be remembered in the wilds of Nepal and India.